Hello. So, today what we're going to do is we're going to make it so that our mech moves in a way which is a little bit better. Not from the perspective of actually moving in a cool way, but from the perspective perspective of looking cool and interacting with the world a little bit better. And for that we're going to use those particle effects that I put on the feet. We're going to make those particle effects actually cool. So the first step to do that is to go down to one of the particle effects. Here we are and make it into an actual event effect. Basically we want it to be a puff of dust, so let's go ahead and do just that. So um, we want it to not loop, because if it loops that's no good, but we'll lo leave looping on for the moment just because that'll be a little bit valuable. We want to have it have a dusty color, so I'm going to pick a very gray yellow, something like that. Um, so we're going to be modifying a lot of these values on the fly, but uh, we're going to go ahead and set some of these to have a better uh, set of starting values, just so that we can see how it'll generally tend to look. So these particles are happening in zero gravity, so they don't have the same fall off that you'd normally get in a uh, atmosphere, and uh, rather they don't—they're happening in a, in a non-atmospheric environment. They, they have a small gravity. Um, so we're going to go ahead and make their speed, uh, their size, a little larger here, but we don't want it to be really obnoxious. So we're going to go ahead and reduce their size over the lifetime. Like this. Put in a dot. Thank you. Let's go ahead and do it like this. And now that is a very small percentage of dots, so what we're going to see is something more like this. Um, and because of that, we want to. Uh, do it in such a way that it'll look really interesting, which means that we don't want to actually do it as a sphere. Uh, a hemisphere or even a cone would be a better option. Um, no, the cone isn't very good. Let's do the hemisphere. There we go. But as you can see, the hemisphere is pointed in precisely the wrong direction. So uh, we have a couple of options here. One is that we can uh, rotate the whole thing around, but we've already got a lot of stuff depending on the fact that that is down. Another option is that we can uh, invert the speed, which will make it hemisphere in the opposite direction. Or rather, it'll be a hemisphere and it'll pass through the zero point. Um, but we want to have a lot of uh, random variables here, so let's go ahead and add them in. Three is too big. All right, so let's go ahead and see how that looks. And the way we're going to see how it looks is we're going to go ahead and save this as an asset. Uh, we're going to name it something else. And then down here, we're going to take this one, and we're going to delete it, and we're going to add the asset in. Now when we change one, they'll both change. But we do have to actually make it so that the main camera remembers both of them, since we just deleted one and re-added it in. Now, of course, this is going to look ridiculous, because it just runs for five seconds and then stops, which is silly. What we're instead going to do is we're going to... Uh, have it so that this doesn't actually start first off it doesn't loop um, and second off it doesn't start when you awake and if we look at the other one you'll find that those same values have carried over and so now we have no particle event well we want to have a particle event but we only want to have the particle event when we actually hit the ground so we go ahead and open up the mech foot
All right, so here's the mech foot. And you see how we've got on trigger enter? That's our collision. So we're going to go ahead and say that particle system, and that's a Unity inherited uh, basic thing. So if a particle system has been created on a game object, that will point to it. And, well, there's a particle system on this game object. So we're just going to go ahead and emit a certain number of particles. How many particles do we want to emit? Well, let's have it based on the speed. How about um, uh, mech.rigidbody.velocity.magnitude times 20. We also are going to go ahead and um, this motion thing where we decrease the motion, instead of on trigger stay, we're only going to have it in on trigger enter. So you only decrease your motion once each time your foot hits the ground, um, which will mean that we don't have to do this uh, time dot delta time thing. Instead, we can just multiply by a fiat. Let's go ahead and make it 0.98. All right, so let's go ahead and hit play. No, you didn't like that? Because it's not an integer value? Picky, picky, picky. No, not infinity. What do you mean? Oh, ah. Uh. So now when we hit the ground, we should emit a, bu a puff of smoke. Poof, like so. And every step we take should also have a puff of smoke attached. So poof, poof. But we're only getting a puff of smoke from one ang from one foot and not the other. The question is why? And the reason is probably right here. Oh, because we didn't set up the mech on this one. Um, mech. Is it the player? Or I can't remember. Um, player, okay. Oh, fuck. I did it while it was playing. There you are. Unity really needs to have the screen change color from dark gray to, say, yellow when you're playing. There we are. Now it's running better. So there's a lot of things that we can to, to, we, that we can fix with this. Um, one of the things we can fix is that uh, right now you can see how the dust is whatever color it wants to be. Um, and that's just whatever color we started it as. We can actually edit this so that it takes on the color of whatever you're stepping on. And in order to do that, we're going to need to get the brick that we hit, which is pretty easy, because we actually already do just that. We do it over in player IO. Um, here we are. See, right here. So let's just go ahead and grab that. And when we do this on trigger enter, we're going to go ahead and uh, do not a ray cast. We don't need to do a ray cast. Um, so we're going to do chunk chunk equals uh, chunk dot get no, find chunk, and then the vector three position can be ours. So um, transform dot position. And then what we want to do is get the point of collision, which is collider dot point. Nope, collider dot collision. Collider dot. What is the variable name? I guess maybe closest point on bounds. I don't happen to see it, so we're just going to use our our position. Um, so vector three p equals transform dot position plus vector three dot down divided by twenty, just to get us a little bit down. And then we're going to do uh, divide by ten. Um, p dot y minus equals that, that divided by equals. Yep. 
Uh, don't need the selected inventory trick. But we do want to do that. No, wait. Well, let's go ahead and <laughs> try it. Um, just to show you what's going on here. Um, no. Well, okay, 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 we'll try it. Destroying the brick when you impact the ground is actually part of the game plan, but it only it's only supposed to happen with soft bricks and only when you're really hauling ass. But right now we should fall straight through. Boom. Nope. Is it not actually working? I think it's probably detecting the brick above the one I want it to detect. Alright, no problem. Let's go ahead and change this to plus vector 3 down divided by 2. Sorry for the sniffles, I'm having really terrible allergies, just hideous allergies. No reference exception. Alright, so it's not work. Oh, it, see, it did work. Yep, so it works sometimes and not others. Uh, and that's probably just because the Y offset is... See, the, the foot itself, the collision for the foot, is actually a sphere. And it usually hits very, very close to the edge of the sphere. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and make this divided by 1.3F. That's not working. I wonder if it's destroying the brick beneath this brick. That seems likely, actually. We can test it by walking over here. Yep. We're going too low. So the problem wasn't that I had too little, it had uh, too little offset, the problem was that I had too much. Boom. That looks like it's much better. It may not be perfect yet, but it will be. It will be. But we still haven't addressed the fact that we want the uh, smoke effect to have whatever color the tile is, rather than whatever color it starts with. So to do that, we're going to go ahead and put in uh, uh, a check to see what kind of brick it is. But first, we need to determine exactly what's causing the error here. Map XYZ equals zero. Uh, so we have this enumerator where we're calling the create visual mesh on an object that is probably non-existent. So uh, we're going to go ahead and if this equals null return, um, which is actually going to cause us a problem because we're not letting go and uh, we need to do this. Well, I still haven't gotten around to checking what kind of brick we're hitting. Uh, we still have the problem where we're screwing this up. What's going on? Yay, debugging. Um, well, that's interesting because we explicitly check and see whether this is equal to null. So evidently, there's something screwy going on with... Hmm. Hold on. That's some stupid bug. I'll figure it out later. Um, so right now what we want to do is we want to actually grab the brick in question, and we can do that right here. Where we would normally get selected inventory. 
But instead of just getting selected inventory, we're actually going to go ahead and grab the texture for the brick. So um, here is a couple of details about how we need what things we need to do in order to do that. Here in tile texture, you can see how we've got it set to import as a texture, but we can't actually continue to do that. We need to set it to import as advanced. And the reason we need to do that is that we need to actually get the uh, read write enabled. We need to set that to true because we want to be able to look at the pixels on this texture. We don't plan on changing them, but we do need to write. We need to do need to be able to read them. So when we get this chunk, we actually don't really care about the chunk. What we care about is the UV coordinate of our collision, which means that we do definitely have to find out the collision point. Or the, the, there should be a collision here, but there's not. Um, we may just have to do a ray cast, even though that's pretty stupid. Yeah, OK, fine, we'll do a ray cast. The collider does not have what I need it to have. So if we have a collision, then we do this stuff. And now what are we going to do exactly? Well, first things first, we're going to go ahead and say that P equals uh, hit dot point plus vector three dot down divided by ten. Oh, I don't need to close it. No, I'm talking about these just need to be tabbed in. There we go. But in addition, we need to get the vector two uh, vector two UV UV chord equals hit dot uv now hit dot texture chord it's not called uv chord it's called texture chord and using this we can go ahead and determine the position in the actual uh, uh, image that we want so int image x equals uv chord dot x times image uh, I need to get the actual size here which I think is in world isn't it uh, so let's go ahead and take a look. Where do I save this texture? I must save it somewhere. Oh, it's probably in a... Is it, it can't be in chunk, because chunk gets instantiated each time. I probably grab it from chunk material. Let's go ahead and put it in world. We'll go ahead and do some stuff with that later. But for now, we need it here. And now we can go ahead and grab that by saying uh, world.currentworld.default brick texture. There we go. And we say times texture.width int. You know, I guess I need to round it, don't I? Int image y equals uv coordinate y times texture dot height, and I'm not sure we may have to invert that y. We'll find out very soon here. And then what we want to do is we want to say particle system dot start color equals texture dot get pixel image x image y. didn't work. Oh, there, it did work. Good. Yay! See? And now we kick up the correct type of dust. Now, it turns out the dust plume isn't very impressive, so I may fix that up to look more impressive, um, but I just wanted to show you it. The dust plume is really unimpressive when we really get moving because we're not actually changing the speed. So before I sign off, let's go ahead and change the speed 
based on the speed we're going. Particle system dot start speed. Start. Start speed. I don't know. I didn't happen to see that. Whatever. Whatever. Uh, equals mech dot rigid body dot velocity, and that means that the foremost wave will catch up to us. Just you know, it'll stay. It'll, it'll stay a pace. Um, yes, of course. I forgot to put the magnitude in, didn't I? So that means that when we hit the ground not moving, we shouldn't get much of anything. But as we start to move, you can see that it really kicks up far too much dust. But at least you can see it. I have a feeling that I crashed the chunk generator somehow. There are some bugs building up that we'll need to fix. They're all involved with the chunk generation process. And since I'm planning on replacing the chunk generator, um, I don't feel too terribly uh, pressed to do that. Debugging a system you plan to replace is a thankless task. Let's go ahead and tweak it so that the size is also larger. There we are. That ought to be a little bit better. <sighs> Boof. Alright, let's get kid. Let's haul ass. Push, push. That's more like what I had hoped for. It might be a little bit a little bit excessive. <laughs> well, it can be tweaked later. I wanted to show you it in action here. Um, so the last thing to do before I go is to reinstantiate this, but have a quick look and make sure that we're over a certain minimum limit. Now, in reality, we could check which kind of brick it is, and later on we'll actually change the brick definition stuff so that it includes a hardness value, but that's much later. Uh, so for now, that's it for today. Thank you for listening.